Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. This video begins Chapter 4, uh, where we start talking about conditional execution, and in particular, the if statement. So at the end of the last chapter, and in our last video, we basically wrote our first programs. Um, the programs that we were able to write have sequential execution. They start at the top, and they run one line after the other, after the other, all the way to the bottom. The problem with uh, with that is that it's very limiting. There aren't many programs that we can write if that is all that we know how to do. And the reason is because most of the time our programs need to express logic inside of them. And uh, in order to do that we need to have certain lines that execute in certain conditions and other lines that execute in different conditions. Uh, Scala has two different constructs for doing this. And the first one is one that exists in most programming languages, and it's, it's a fairly easy one to understand. And so we're going to talk about it here, and it's the if. Um, the, and I will say it's the if construct, because in Scala, if uh, can be used both as a statement and as an expression. And just to remind you, the difference between those two, a statement is something that executes. It does something, whereas an expression is something that is evaluated and it has a value and a type associated with it. Uh, and the if in, uh, in Scala can be either one. So to help illustrate this, I want to run a simple, uh, write a simple script that uses uh, if. And in fact, we'll, we'll write two versions of it. Um, the program that I want to write is something that I consider to be fairly easy to understand. As you can see, the file name I'm using is bouncer, uh, in this case bouncer1, because we are going to write a second version of it. And the idea here is that this is a program for a bouncer working in a bar, and that bouncer, you know, looks at people's age and determines whether they are allowed into um, the, you know, a bar or a club or whatever based upon their age. So very simple little program, but it is something that we couldn't do uh, previously because we need to be able to say, well, if you're 21, you get in, otherwise you don't. Okay? And, and that was something that wasn't part of, of what we knew how to express previously. So I'm going to start off this script by creating a val, and I'll call it age, and we will call read int. And so we're going to read from the user, and in fact, actually, we should, if we're going to read from the user, in this case, we should probably print them a prompt. Uh, how old are you? We're going to be a very trusting bouncer. We're just going to ask them for their age and um, believe them. Probably not a good policy for a bouncer to use, but it, it works for our program here. Um, and now we want to have down below some type of a print line for whether or not they are allowed in. So we either print, you know, you're allowed in or beat it, whatever. Um, and whether or not uh, we allow them in is based upon whether that age that was entered here is 21 or not. So the first version of this that I'm going to write is actually using if as a statement. And this is the style that you would use in most programming uh, languages that are, that are used at the time when I'm recording this. Maybe that will change in the next few years. Um, uh, it is actually probably, it's going to be the more verbose way, uh, but I want you to, to see this approach first. Uh, this uses the if just as a statement. And so I'm going to create a var called response, and response is going to start off as, a, uh, as an empty string. Okay. So at the bottom here, then, I will print line response. And what needs to happen in this blank area is we need to have response filled in with the re an appropriate value based upon their age. And so we're going to do this with an if. So I'm going to say if, 
and then I have an open parenthesis. So the syntax for the if uh, begins with the keyword if, then you have an open parenthesis and an expression in here that evaluates to a Boolean followed by a closed parenthesis. And the, th the thing that's inside of here is typically referred to as the condition. So when that condition is true, one thing uh, happens and when the condition is false, something else happens. Now, you should be allowed into, or I guess you get, you are not allowed in if you are under 21. So the natural thing for us to type here is to say if age is less than 21, and we close off the parentheses, then we could say response equals uh, And associated with the if, there is also an else. And if you are not, uh, oh wait, nope, sorry, that was age less than 21. This should not be, say, come on in, that would be. Okay, an appropriate response there. Else. Okay, so if we read through this, first we print out, and remember this is going to do sequential execution in that it goes from the top to the bottom. The only difference is here that this if else construct makes it so that either this top uh, statement is going to happen or this bottom statement is going to happen. So one of these two assignments is going to happen, but it's not possible for both of them to happen. Um, because so if age is less than 21, it'll do the first one. Otherwise, it'll do the second one. We can actually run this and it will ask us how old we are. And let's say we're old enough. If we run it again and we're not old enough, Okay, we get appropriate responses on that. Uh, to be confident this works, we want to test it with uh, a lot of other possibilities and make sure that it doesn't uh, crash or behave incorrectly. If we go back to here though, um, what if this hadn't worked? What if we had done something wrong? Uh, when something goes wrong in a program, typically the way that you uh, the, the first way that you learn how to, to find that and the way that you're probably going to do for the majority of this semester is to put in additional print statements that help you see what is happening. So in order to understand what's going wrong, you need to understand what it's actually doing. For example, if you gave it an input and you thought that it was supposed to say get lost, but it doesn't say that at the end, uh, you might put a print statement. You'd want a print statement in this if that would print when it goes uh, on that branch. The way that this code has been written right now is not ideal for that purpose. Uh, we would because then we would need to have you know, kind of two statements inside of the if, a second one that is a print that says old enough or whatnot. Um, this code will not work. And let me come over here and show you that. The problem is that the if is technically only allowed to have one statement or one expression in the true section and one in the false section. But I want to have two here. So how can I do this? Uh, the solution to this is to introduce something called a code block. Now you might note that I have indented this here. Uh, while that is good style and it helps humans read it, Scala doesn't care. Uh, Scala sees this first line and says that is what's inside of the if, and it sees the second line and says that is not inside of the if, and then it hits an else and it says, I don't understand else, there was no if here. Um, because when you use the if as a statement, you don't have to have the else. Especially when you're using if as a statement, you probably should get into the habit of putting in these curly braces, these code blocks. So curly braces um, allow you to have multiple 
statements or yeah, have multiple statements that can be used as a single statement or as a single expression. Let's actually, let's go play with this a little bit in the RAPL. Uh, one other thing that's worth playing with, we typed in here age less than 21. We'll come back to that in the next video and, and look at details there. Uh, and it worked. Scala said that was fine. Um, let's just say age equals 26. And just to see what happens, what does age less than 21 do here? Well, it is an expression, and it returns whether or not age is less than 21. And that is either going to be true or false. So it has a type of Boolean. And that happens to be exactly what we need to put inside of an if there. So let's try something with a code block. So if I open curly brace and I hit, I hit enter, uh, I don't go back to the normal prompt. Scala is still waiting. It's waiting for me to type in more things. It basically says, you haven't finished yet. Type in something else. So <clears throat> first, we'll just kind of do the curly braces in a way where they don't matter that much. Um, here, I've put curly braces around a single expression. And that expression gets evaluated, and it is the value. What if I put multiple? things in there. Okay. What is the value going to be? Well, it turns out that when this happens, it's going to do the 5 plus 4, and it's also going to do the 9 plus the 9 minus 3, but it only gives us back the, the value of the last one. Now, in this case, you're like, well, why does that matter? Well, here it doesn't. That 5 plus 4 is just wasted execution. But if you have something like a print in there, then that actually winds up being executed. It says in the block here. And then the last thing in between the curly braces is what you uh, is the value that you get back from that code block. So now in this case, we don't care about the value that we got back because we're using the if as a statement, not as an expression. But we need to have the curly braces so that this works properly. OK. Um, and you can see this printed, though. Once again, I put the wrong print statement. You're not old enough in there. Even if you have single statements inside of an if, if you're using an if as, as a statement in this way, it's probably good to get into the habit of ending your if with a curly brace uh, and, and having a code block there and indenting the stuff inside of it, even if you don't have to, even if there's only one thing there. A lot of times you probably do this just because it's more readable, uh, people will understand it better, and if you happen to add a second thing in, it will work better. Okay, so that shows you bouncer one. I'm going to copy bouncer one to a new file called bouncer2, and I'm going to edit it. I want to do something different here, where instead of doing this, having the if as a statement, I want to use it as an expression instead. And it turns out that this way is probably the preferred way in Scala. Uh, I mentioned when we talked about variables that in general you should prefer vals over vars. You really only want to use vars when they're absolutely necessary. Now, the way that I wrote this, because I am doing assignments to response, it looks like it is necessary. But that's because I chose to use the if as a statement. If I use the if as an expression, I can change this to a val. And shorten this up a bit. So now I'm using the if as an expression in that it's supposed to give me back something. And what it gives me back is a string. It is either this string or it is this string. So it comes in here and it creates response 
but the value that it gives, gives to response depends upon whether the age is less than 21. If it is, it says get lost, otherwise it's, it becomes come on in, and then it prints that response there. And if we run this, it still works as it was supposed to. Um, this is one of the cases where if you're using it as an expression and things are short, a lot of times you might not use curly braces. You might actually go down to this. And once again, that, that this only works if this is very short, but a lot of times when you use the if as an expression, um, it is. Uh, if you only needed, if your only use for response was printing it, turns out you could do away with response completely. and just print line the if. Okay, so one of the things you notice here is that using if as an expression not only gets rid of the var, it makes the code significantly shorter. Uh, so depending upon what we wanted to do with it, we could change the var to a val, or we could just get rid of having that variable altogether uh, when we use it as an, as an expression. So that's a brief introduction to if and uh, an example of where we can use it as well as how we use it both as a statement where the things inside of it are doing something as opposed to using it as an expression where the two branches have a value to them. Uh, we'll come back next time and we'll explore in a little bit more detail what we can do here. Uh, this just happened to work the way that we would have set it and expected to write it, but not everything is going to be quite as straightforward. And we'll see that shortly.